first time I learned anything about Sadaka was in 1945 after the war. And my, father, my mother took me by the hand and said, listen, we have to help people who have less than we do. But she said, this old lady who was bent, if we do not help her, she will die from hunger. So here are a few coins. You have to look at her in the eyes and say thank you. Years later, when my father bar mitzvahed me, I asked him, why do I have to say thank you? I say thank you because we do have the duty to do good whenever we have the opportunity. And she gives you the opportunity to do something good, so you should say thank you. this program to Europe, um, I would say that the fact that my grandparents are Holocaust survivors and that I've heard a lot about the Holocaust through my family, but I've never really firsthand like experienced. I just seen like with everyone in their different, like if they were tied to the Holocaust, they all have different experience or they feel like they're closer to it than someone like me who's not at all. But I just feel like none of us are really close to it in that sense. I feel like it could happen to anyone. It's one of those subjects that I just really struggle to comprehend because there were so many people on both sides that made the choice to um, commit this genocide and I don't know how that can happen when there's so many people that could have prevented it and at the same time how someone could convince people that this was a right thing to do. So the program consists of, um, of really three parts in two countries. Uh, the first part is teaching about the long history of Jews in Middle Europe and Eastern Europe. And then we focus pretty intensely on the Holocaust. We spend a lot of time reflecting in Germany what it meant to be the perpetrator of an attempted genocide against a people. And in Poland, we take a look at what it meant for a Catholic country to be the host to the concentration camps that ended up killing the six and a half million Jews. Uh, I'm here uh, in two main capacities. Uh, the first is to provide uh, a pastoral presence in this uh, process of exploration of the Holocaust in Poland. I don't necessarily think that this program is about uh, expanding one's own idea of faith necessarily. Uh, I think for some people it might. For some people it might challenge their faith. This is not a pleasant subject. This is not going to be fun material to read or study or learn about. But you're going to have an amazing experience doing it. Eleven years ago, I taught at the University of Warsaw, and when I planned the class, the two-week study of the Holocaust in Poland, one of my thoughts was, how can I get contemporary American students to understand the Polish Holocaust in Poland through the Polish point of view, as well as the point of view I'm teaching, the American point of view. So, very different students, um, but I, I guess, you know, I hope it's going to work out, and, and, and they're going to... Um, to, to get something out of it, they're going to learn something as well. And I'm actually interested, I have to tell you, that I'm, what I'm interested in is what kind of a difference in terms of the level of knowledge we have between the American students and the Polish students about um, the Holocaust and about Jews in Poland. I'm actually wondering whether it's going to turn out that the American students know more or, or quite the opposite. 
I walked in and um, Matt and I sat down behind these other two Polish students who were having a conversation and I had no idea what they were saying but they were pointing and laughing and he said something about someone being stupid and um, Americans being stupid. So that's, that's the legacy we live. Um, for the most part, um, most of the kids, they were studying um, American literature as their majors and they didn't know, they knew about the Holocaust but they didn't know Jews were a big part of the Holocaust and they didn't even know that Jews were in their communities as much as they were. So they were shocked by that. Which is mainly focused with us through like the idea of it being a Jewish genocide. So I think I learned a lot that a lot of Polish people suffered through this Holocaust and it's not only a Jewish genocide. I think everyone kind of got this whole new perspective on what the Holocaust means and how everyone was affected in different ways. And then the Russians liberated us in the spring of 44. And the atrocities we saw when we went out were horrendous. We saw bodies being shoved by tanks with blades on it into piles, into mountains. And people hung from trees all over the place. They took their shoes. Well, maybe they were collaborators, were Nazis, they were, God knows who they were. They were just hanging them left and right. It left an incredible impression on children. Death was all around us. Hard to deal with it. One thing he did say that stuck with me was um, he had said that, like, if when he was in the Holocaust, he was hiding in the cellar and like Polish people would let him stay in their homes. And in Poland, if you let a Jew stay in your house, you had a risk of your whole family getting shot. And um, he said if he had, you know, if something like that happened to the black people and he was given that choice to let a black person stay in his home, would he do it? And he said he wouldn't. He said he wouldn't risk his family. So I think just um, he put the Holocaust into a different perspective and like understanding that it wasn't so black and white. It was a very gray area and like just because people may have been bystanders or they didn't help as much as people think a hero should be, I feel like we shouldn't completely judge them as bad people and that, you know, it's so different if you're actually in that person's situation. Um, I did not like him at first. At the first meeting we had, besides being eaten alive by bees, <laughs> um, he just had, he seemed to have this attitude that uh, the Jewish people are better than anyone else. But um, I think it's natural to have that kind of attitude because you just, you want to believe in your people. And you want to believe that your people have a purpose and I don't know. He was just such a gracious person. He, um, he kind of, in a, in a sense, gives you hope, I guess. He's a man that went through a lot and was able to like recover from that and begin a family and live his life normally and then give back a lot. And I don't think people see that kind of hospitality. You know, I think there are different like um, interpretations of what sadaka can be. Sadaka can be giving to a charity, or it could even, in some cases, be like being a good person and um, giving back in a more like personable way. And I think that's you know subconsciously, like if you're a good person and if you're giving back and and caring about others and treating others the way that you want to be treated, that's a form of sadaka. In a way, everything has led up to tomorrow, in one way. Everything we've done so far is leading up to tomorrow, where we're in the belly of the beast in Auschwitz. What do I expect? Well, it's going to be like, to me, going to a funeral. You know, We're just going deeper and deeper and deeper into it. 
And this is part of my pedagogy. But, you know, pedagogy, teaching, learning, student, you don't know until you're in there and you're doing it. Uh, it's hard for me to imagine what tomorrow is going to be like. This will be my first time going to the camp. But if I had to guess, I would, I would say that I think tomorrow is going to be very challenging, very emotional. It will be upsetting. What was for you your first time in Auschwitz was hard, especially Birkenau, um, especially the part where we went to the crematorium areas because I felt like we're mourning the loss of about a million people at Auschwitz-Birkenau and all that was left was these stones as commemorative like stones. I came into this experience thinking I was gonna fall apart and cry and all that. But then when I got there, it was everything I expected it to be. And I think because it was everything I expected it to be, I didn't cry. I knew there were gonna be rows and rows of um, barns that they stuffed people in. And um, I mean, I've seen so many countless documentaries about the Holocaust. I've studied the Holocaust my whole life that nothing was a surprise. I've seen worse things on the documentaries. I was, I didn't really know how to grasp the whole situation and just understanding that so many people died. I didn't, I couldn't grasp it all. So it wasn't, it, it didn't really help me. It more, I would say, hinder my understanding of everything because it was just overwhelming. For me, as my great grandparents who died there, I um, I thought that was hard to just see these stones and just to see that was the only thing that's left, and that's that's how you have more than one million people. I don't. That was really hard for me. I think I'm 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 better learning in numbers because when you put when it becomes too emotional, it gets. It's, it doesn't really help me advance and more hinders me. I felt more misunderstood than I felt bad about not crying because I did feel bad. I felt horrible inside, but nobody could see it. And the people that were falling apart, they had people consoling them. And there was no one consoling me because you couldn't tell from the outside. But. I was falling apart on the inside. I just wasn't crying. Part of my goal in doing this is to create new witnesses so that you are not a first-hand witness, 
but in my teaching you, you become a witness, or in your coming here to Poland and Germany and seeing the concentration camps firsthand with your own eyes, that through those observations, you too are now a witness, and you can pass that form of testimony on to your own children or your own students if you become a teacher. I think what we've been taught this entire trip is that we have to we have to remember this and we have to educate others about this as well as not feel like we're in this very sad mournful place because we need to move past that so i think the best way is to educate everybody is to go back from this trip and tell people what we saw and what we felt When I was a kid, I didn't like people of color. I didn't like Jewish people. Um, the town I lived in was very segregated. But then somewhere during the time I was growing up, um, I stopped hating different people, but I felt pity for them. I pitied people who were different. I pitied minorities. And I don't know when that changed, but I did realize on this trip that at some point since then, I've changed to not pity people of minorities because I've learned that they have more than just a history of genocide. They had a culture before that. They are a people. It's not just Oh, Jewish people were in concentration camps and they were killed off. Because that's really how I learned about the Holocaust when I was a kid. But now I realize there are people who had a culture before it and that is something to mourn. Came here just to learn and I didn't see it as a Jewish Holocaust or things like that. I saw it as people died. I think one of the things I did learn on this trip was we're always going to be different, but there's no need to kill each other because of that. It inspired me and influenced me, and I'm going to take back everything that I learned here and bring it back home. There's nothing specific right now that I can say I know I will do, but I know that every decision I make after this will be changed because of this experience.